everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Huck. Today we are talking about series. Uh, one of my intentions for 2022 is to focus on series this year, to focus on either at least making progress in or finishing series, because very often I don't. Um, I just like start series and then either go like, well, at some point I'll have to decide if I'm into this or not, or go like, I'll finish it later. And I just like never really make progress in them. And that's something that I really want to do this year. Because uh, also I think it'll help me to really enjoy books more because you get like the full arc of the story when you complete a series. Um, so there are a lot of reasons why I want to focus on series this year. I'll link in the description my 2022 intentions video if you want to see more about my um, bookish intentions for the year. But today we're talking about series. Uh, these are pretty much all going to be books or series that you have heard me talk about uh, in other videos. Um, but I wanted to kind of consolidate them all here just so that maybe like halfway through the year or something, I could do a check-in video to see like, where am I at with my, with my series reading? Have I actually been, you know, focusing on series the way that I meant to? Have I been getting to the series that I want to? We'll find out. This is my reading journal for 2022. I love the color for this one. It is from Archer and Olive, uh, but I am going to be looking at this because uh, I have a spread that is about my series. My, I have a series to start, series to finish, and series to uh, decide on. So I want to continue on and kind of decide where I'm at with them. Uh, so let's get started with series to start. So these are pretty much going to be a lot of the books that if you've watched my top 10 books to read in 2022, there's going to be a lot of overlap because many of those were um, like first books in a series and those are kind of my top priority of series that I wanted to start. So first up we have The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu. This is a silk punk adult fantasy series uh, that I think gets into some like military fantasy themes, which I don't always love military fantasy, but for some reason I just really, I've been very intrigued by the series for a long time, really been wanting to get to it. Um, so it's kind of been top priority for the beginning of this year. This is a very chunky series, like the first book is the shortest one, it's around 600 pages, and then the rest of them are like 800 to like a thousand pages. So if I'm trying to uh, read this whole series this year, I have gotten myself into quite a commitment. Um, but there are four books in that series. The next series that I have is the Tide Child trilogy by R.J. Barker, which starts with the Bone Ships. So this is a maritime fantasy, which is set in a world where dragons have not been seen for a very long time, but there are these like magical ships made out of dragon bones. Uh, and there's this kind of ongoing war. And then one day they see a live dragon. So dragons may be coming back to the world and now everybody's kind of like, we have to find the dragons. Um, especially because if anyone can get a live dragon on their side in this ongoing war, they will have an advantage. Next is the Dalriada trilogy, which I did not realize this was a trilogy because I've only really ever heard of the first book, but the first one is The White Mare uh, by, I think it's uh, Julia Watson. And this series is historical fiction set in early medieval um, Scotland, and we are following a priestess. I think there's romance. I really don't know that much about this series, but it's one of those ones that's always recommended for fans of the Seven Water series. So I've been meaning to get to it for a very long time, but I didn't realize that it was part of a trilogy until recently. So I would like to start that series. Then we have uh, Between Earth and Sky by Rebecca Rowanhorse. Uh, this is a adult fantasy series that starts with Black Sun. Um, I'm not sure how many books are in this series. I know the second book is coming out this year, but I don't know if there will be any more after that. But I definitely would like to start this series this year. Um, and then the last one, I never know how to pronounce this. <sighs> We're going to try... Um, Esaliagen, Esaliagen series. 
I don't know, by Michelle West, uh, which is, th so the book that was on my top 10 list was The Hidden City, which is the first book in the House Wars series. So this larger series um, has like sub-series to it. The House Wars are, the House War is one of those sub-series. So I would like to start the House War series with starting with The Hidden City. Um, I guess I technically already started the larger like world series because I did read Hunter's Oath, although I'm kind of not really counting that one. But I would like to start the House War series by Michelle West. Um, okay, so those are the series that I would like to start. Now we'll get into series I would like to finish. Oh, also, um, something I guess maybe I should have said at the beginning is that the series that I'm including on these lists are only ones that either are complete, so all of the books in the series are out, or um, the final book in the series is coming out in 2022, so it would be possible for me to complete the series this year. Um, I am not including um, on this list anything that is like an ongoing series where I would not be able to finish it this year, at least on the like to finish list. Um, I do have Between Earth and Sky on the to start list, which I am not sure if that is an ongoing series or not, but that's fine because I only plan, I only need to start it this year in order to be successful. But for my to finish list, only books, only series where the books are all out or will be out. Okay, so first up, um, one that's kind of straddling the like to start and to finish categories is the Fits and the Fools trilogy by Robin Hobb. Um, I would like to both start and finish this trilogy this year. Also, this will finish the larger like realm of the elderlings for me. Um, I really don't know anything about what happens in this final trilogy. Um, I just know that we are back with Fitz and the Fool and that's it. I don't really need to know what it's about though because like I'm gonna read it no matter what. Um, okay, so I'd like to both start and finish that one. I also would like to finish the Devabod trilogy by S.A. Chakraborty. This is a adult fantasy series that takes place partially um, in like historical Cairo and partially in Devabod, which is this sort of magical world. Um, and I read the first book in 2020, I think, uh, and I enjoyed it, but it wasn't one that I like felt like I needed to immediately finish the series, so I just kind of never got to it. But I do want to continue on with it. I just need to like, I need like a little push, you know? I need to, <laughs> I need to get myself to finish the series even though I am very interested in it. So maybe putting it on this list will uh, get me to focus more on it. So I have two books left, uh, which are uh, Kingdom of Copper and Empire of Gold. Then I also uh, would like to finish the Salvagers trilogy, which is a sci-fi series by Alex White. This series, in the first one, we're following this group of salvagers who are just trying to like kind of salvage parts and or find treasure and stuff like that um, out in the universe, but they kind of end up getting uh, wrapped up in a larger conspiracy and sort of accidentally save the universe. It kind of turns out that they're like expected to continue to save the universe. So I only have one book left in that series, which is The Worst of All Possible Worlds. So that does not sound optimistic. We'll see where it goes, but it's been a fun series so far. Uh, then I also would like to finish uh, the United States of Asgard by Tessa Grattan. This is a kind of YA contemporary fantasy-ish. It takes place in Asgard, but Asgard is very similar to like modern day or maybe like early 2000s uh, America. So it, it kind of just feels like contemporary fantasy. But it has sort of a similar concept as like a Percy Jackson book where we're following teenagers who are the children of different uh, Norse gods and we're following them as they like, you know, are being heroes and going on adventures and battling monsters from mythology and all of this. Um, so that series, I read the first book like two years ago. I 
didn't love it. Um, and honestly, if it wasn't by Tessa Grattan, I probably would not have continued on with the series, but I have this like ongoing uh, effort to read all of Tessa Grattan's books. Um, so I, this is the last complete series by her that I have not read yet. Uh, and I have three books to read in this series. I think it might be two novels and then there's like a short story collection in that world. Um, I also would like to finish a duology that is the Beast Player duology. Uh, so the first one is the Beast Player, the second one is Beast Warrior. I read Beast the Beast Player um, maybe three years ago? I'm not exactly sure. And at the time I like I loved the first half of the book. I was kind of meh about the second half of the book and I wasn't sure if I was going to continue on with it but it's one that's kind of stuck with me so I decided that I was like you know what I am gonna continue on and the second book came out and I got it and I need to read it. I actually think I need to reread the first book before I can read the second book um, but I really want to finish that duology. Then the next four series that I have are ones where the final book will be coming out this year. So first up is the Founders Trilogy by Robert Jackson Bennett. The first one was Foundry Side. The last one that's coming out is I think called Locklands, which should be coming out um, in the first half of the year. It's an adult fantasy series where they have this kind of uh, magic, this sort of like magical coding where you have to sort of like convince objects of what they're meant to do um, but it's like also kind of heisty and like it it's been a really fun series I'm excited about the final one coming out uh, so I'd like to finish that trilogy I also want to finish the dreamer trilogy when the final book comes out this year I think that one's not coming out until October but uh, this is the series by Maggie Stiefvater that's a spin-off from The Raven Cycle, but in this one we are following the Lynch brothers. I haven't been loving this series quite as much as The uh, Raven Cycle, but that's kind of like a high bar. I don't know if there are many things I would love as much as The Raven Cycle, um, but I do really want to finish the trilogy when the final book comes out. Um, another series that I would like to finish, actually the next two are ones that I am not a hundred percent sure <laughs> that they, the series is ending. I think these are going to be duologies, so I think I will be able to finish these this year, uh, but I'm not like 100% certain. So the first one is the Nightshine series by Tessa Grattan. So this is another YA fantasy series by Tessa Grattan. I have been enjoying this one more. I read the first book, which was Nightshine, two years ago when it came out. <laughs> um, and the second book, which is Moon Dark Smile, is coming out this year. And then the other one that I am thinking is going to be, oh, there's a dog hair on me. Uh, the other one that I think is coming out this year is the second book in the Wilder Wood series. I, again, I think this is going to be a duology, but I'm not 100% sure. But the first one was For the Wolf, which I read last year and I enjoyed. It's sort of a dark, foresty uh, Beauty and the Beast retelling. The second book is For the Throne, which seems like it's going in kind of a Snow White direction. Um, so I'm not sure if it's going to be another retelling, but it seems like it's going that way. Um, and again, I think this is going to be a duology, so hopefully I'll be able to finish that series this year as well. Okay, now we're on to the books that I or the series that I need to make a decision about. Uh, so these are mostly ones that I need to read. I want to read like one or two more books in this series to sort of decide how I feel about them and like do I want to continue on with it. The first one is the Legends of the First Empire series by Michael J. Sullivan. So this is a fantasy series that is actually like a prequel series to this, the books that he, I think, is more well known for, which are the Ryuria Revelations and Ryuria Chronicles. Um, these are very, like, classic fantasy in a lot of ways, and I read the first book a couple years ago, which was Age of Myth, uh, and I enjoyed it. It was fun, but it wasn't one that I felt super compelled to continue on with, but I also didn't really want to like DNF the series. I always meant to continue on with it, but now it's been like two years and I haven't. Uh, so I really want to move on with, like continue on with that series. I think I'm going to read the whole thing, but even if I 
don't, I still would try something else from Michael J. Sullivan. Um, Cause I kind of picked a weird place to start with his stuff. I think most people recommend starting with the Ryuria Revelations, I believe. One of the Ryuria series. Um, but I ended up starting with Legends of the First Empire. So even if I don't like this, I probably would try Ryuria Revelations anyways. Something that has also kind of reignited my interest in his books though, is that since reading the first book, my mom actually has read all of Michael J. Sullivan's books now uh, that are in this world, at least. I don't know if he has anything that's not in this world, but she's read all of them. She just like binge read all of the books and like loves them. This is like one of her favorite series now. Um, and while like my mom and I have a little bit of a different taste in fantasy, but we definitely have some overlap. So I'm not sure if I'll feel quite the same way, but her, how much she's like loved this series has kind of like reignited my interest in it. Um, so I definitely want to continue on with that. Another one that actually my mom has also read is the Green Rider series by Kristen Britton. Um, I think she's like reading the seventh book right now or something like that. Uh, this is another one where I like read the first book, enjoyed it, but didn't feel compelled to continue on, but also didn't want a DNF. So I really want to read at least one more book before kind of deciding how I feel about it. Like, is the second book going to get me hooked and be like, oh yeah, I need to finish this. Or am I gonna be like, this is not gonna be for me. Um, if you're curious about my mom's evaluation of the series, she definitely does not enjoy the Green Rider series as much as Michael J. Sullivan's books. She has kind of been complaining about the series the entire time she's been reading it, but is reading it. Like, is, you know, it's, it's good enough that she has continued with it, uh, but has not been loving it consistently. Um, Another series that I need to make progress on is the Vork Hosigan Saga by Lois Master Bujold. So this is her like 14 book sci-fi series. Lois Master Bujold is an author that I generally really enjoy. I've read almost all of her fantasy books um, and really like most of them but she's actually most well known for her sci-fi, for this Vorkosigan saga. Um, I've read the first two books in it, or at least I have read two books in it. There are different uh, way, like orders in which you can read the book. So I've read two of them. The two that I read are actually like the prequels uh, to the main series. And I didn't have very strong feelings about them. If it wasn't front by Lois Master Bujold, I probably would not have continued on with the series. Um, but I want to continue on at this point, one, because I like this author, so I want to give it another try, uh, two, because I just hear great things about this series, and three, because I know that I started in a slightly weird place. I wanted to read the prequels first and read in like internal chron chronological order, but really the thing that people love about this book or this series from what I've heard, is the main character of the main series, which is Miles Vorkosigan. I think his name is Miles Vorkosigan. Um, and I haven't gotten to him yet because I've been reading the prequels that are about his parents. Uh, so I want to read one or two more books in the series that are part of like the main series where we follow Miles in order to see how I feel about um, him as a character and like the main series. Uh, so that's one that I definitely I, I feel like I need to actually get to the part that's like what the series is actually like before making a decision. Uh, and then the final one that I want to get to is the Celtic Blood series by Melanie Karsak. This is a historical fantasy series that's sort of like a retelling of the story of Lady Macbeth, like her backstory. Um, and I read the first one a couple years ago I thought it was okay. There were some issues that I had with it at this point. I don't really remember what they were because I read it a while ago. Uh, but I remember there was enough about it that I was intrigued by that I did want to continue on with it. So I recently got the second book. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna see like if I want to continue on with this series. So that was the last one. <laughs> 
So those, that is a summation of my top priority uh, series that I want to start, want to finish, and want to continue or make decisions on. Um, I would love to know what are some series that you are uh, excited about this year, things that you want to start, that you want to finish, or what are some things that you need to like finally make a decision on. But thank you all for watching and until next time, bye!